Let's talk about continuity. A function f of x is said to be continuous at any x value c if the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to the actual function value f of c. What does this mean? This means, let's take a look here at x equals c. If we were to take the limit as x approaches c, we notice that the limit exists here. Why does the limit exist? Well, because the limit from the left-hand side is approaching b. The limit from the right-hand side is approaching b. And because the left-hand limit is equal to the right-hand limit, the limit exists and is b. So here, let's write that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to b. Now what is f of c? f of c is also b. Well because the limit as you approach c is equal to the function value at c, our function is in fact continuous at x equals c. Take a look at x equals d. Now if you want to find the function value at d, it doesn't exist. However, we can make it exist by just putting a point somewhere. Let's put a point right here at d comma b. So here, f of d is equal to b. However, if we were to take the limit as x approaches d of f of x, we would notice that from the left-hand side, we're approaching a. From the right-hand side, we're still approaching a. And therefore, the limit as x approaches d is equal to a. Now, because the function value doesn't equal the limit, this is not continuous right here. So we say that f has a discontinuity at x equals d. To put this into planar terms, Here's how you can think about continuity. If you can write down a function without picking up your pen, it's continuous. However, if at some point you have to pick up your pen, for example, if you have a line like this, you pick it up and then you start somewhere else, this is not continuous. Or Let's say that we have an asymptote. Ooh, we had to pick up our pen right there. Not continuous. So imagine that you're riding a roller coaster. If you're going to survive that roller coaster, your function's continuous. However, if you're going to fly off the roller coaster, it's not continuous. Now, there are four different types of discontinuity. Let's talk about them. The first type of discontinuity is called a removable discontinuity. You've seen this before as a whole. Now take a look here. The limit as x approaches c is this hole down here. Because as we approach c from the left hand side we're approaching this value where the hole would be. And if we approach the right hand side we're still approaching this value where the hole would be. However, the function value at c is somewhere else. And this is why there is a discontinuity here because the limit as x approaches c of f of x, which is where this hole would be, is not equal to the function value at c. Now why is this called a removable discontinuity? Well, we can actually remove the discontinuity quite easily. And the reason is because we can plug up the hole. So check this out. We've got this hole up here, and we can plug it in right here and get rid of this other function value. Boom. We've plugged in our hole, and now this is, in fact, continuous. Well, let's take a look at how we can plug in the hole. Here we have f of x is equal to x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. Now, if we were to take the limit as x approaches 2 
of f of x, you would have to do some algebra gymnastics. We could factor the top. This factors as x minus 2 times x plus 2, and then the x minus 2's cancel out. And so really this is just the graph of the line x plus 2 with a hole at x equals 2. Why is this a hole? Well, because it cancels out with the same factor on the top. Remember, when your bottom factor that's giving you trouble cancels out, you therefore have a hole. So we can now plug 2 back in. This is equal to 4. However, if we actually found f of 2, this does not exist. This doesn't exist because you can't have 0 in your denominator. So right now, we have a hole at x equals 2. And if you were to graph this, this would be the graph of the line x plus 2 with a hole at x equals 2. So here we go. Here's up 1, 2. Let's make a line right now. Here's a line. Let's find x equals 2. Here's 1, 2. And we have a hole right here at x equals 2 comma, 4. So we can see from the left-hand side, we're approaching 4. From the right-hand side, we're approaching 4. However, this doesn't exist right here because there's a hole. Now, how can we plug in this hole? Quite easily, actually. We can plug in this hole by turning f of x into a piecewise function. So check this out. We can let f of x equal x squared minus 4 over 2 over x minus 2 when x is not equal to 2. However, when x is equal to 2, we're going to plug it in by just making that little function value at 4. So now what this has done is, well, when x doesn't equal 2 everywhere else, we'll just follow this line x plus 2. However, at x equals 2, we're going to add in this little point right here at 4. So we plug in the point, and this is no longer discontinuous. This is now continuous. So by plugging in that hole, we can actually make a discontinuity a continuity, which is why this is called a removable discontinuity. We can remove that discontinuity by just plugging in the hole. The second type of discontinuity is called a jump. Now here we have an absolute value function. To the left of 2, our function is approaching negative 1. To the right of 2, our function is approaching positive 1. This is a discontinuity for a couple of reasons, actually. Reason number 1, if you look at the function value at x equals 2, it doesn't exist. There is no function value at x equals 2. Reason? Because we have 0 over 0, and you can't do that. There is no function value at x equals 0. And if there's no function value, there obviously is no continuity because the function value has to equal the limit. Well, there's part 2 of the problem, the limit. Let's take a look at the limit as you approach 2. To do that, we look at both sides. The limit as we approach 2 from the left-hand side is negative 1. The limit as we approach 2 from the positive side is positive 1. The left-hand limit doesn't equal the right-hand limit. Therefore, the limit doesn't, equal, doesn't even exist. So the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x also does not exist. Well, f of 2 doesn't exist. The limit doesn't exist. Therefore, there's no chance they're ever going to equal each other. This is definitely a major discontinuity here. So anytime you have a jump, meaning that you're going from one function value to another function value at the same point, that is a discontinuity. The next type of discontinuity is a vertical asymptote. Why is this a discontinuity? Well, if we were to take the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over x squared, in this particular example, the left-hand side goes off to pos infinity. The right-hand side goes off to pos infinity. And this is equal to positive infinity. Many times, the limit of a vertical asymptote doesn't even exist because you'll have 
one side going off to infinity and the other side going down to negative infinity. So that wouldn't even work because the limit doesn't exist. However, let's take a look at f of 0. What's the function value at x equals 0? Well, we can plug it in. Uh-oh, we get 1 over 0. That doesn't exist. So even though the limit exists, the function value doesn't exist here because we're going off to infinity or negative infinity. Your function value can't equal infinity or negative infinity. So any time you have a vertical asymptote, at that point, there is a discontinuity. Now the last type of discontinuity is called an infinite oscillation. Consider the graph f of x equals sine of 1 over x. The thing that makes this funny is the 1 over x inside of the sine. Now at x equals 0, we have a discontinuity in 1 over x. This actually has a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. The reason is because as x approaches 0 from the left hand side, 1 over x approaches negative infinity. And as x approaches 0 from the positive side, 1 over x approaches positive infinity. Now, as x gets really close to 0 from the left hand side, we're taking sine of what's approaching apparently negative infinity. Ooh, sine of negative infinity. What is going on here? Well, think of it this way. As sine goes on forever, sine just does this, right? In both the negative and the positive directions. It just keeps on going between positive one and negative one. Well, as x approaches infinity, sine of x is approaching every single number in between one and negative one, which is what's happening in here. As x approaches zero from the left hand side, one over x approaches negative infinity, and therefore we're taking sine of what's approaching negative infinity, which means that sine is taking on all of the values between negative one and one simultaneously as you get closer and closer to zero. That creates this weird kind of block-shaped oscillation. It looks like there is no uh, white stuff inside of there. There's no like empty spots. And the reason is because there actually are no empty spots. It's just a complete block of stuff as you get closer and closer to zero. Well, there's no way to determine whether that is continuous or not continuous. Actually, it turns out it's not continuous. Let's be honest. This is not continuous in here. And therefore, an infinite oscillation, not continuous.